I found myself in constant power struggles with my seven-year-old. I wanted him to be advancing more in math and more up to grade level in various types of work I had predetermined that he should know by now. One day, it dawned on me. This did not interest him. It was boring and it wasn't meaningful to him because it didn't apply to his real life or his passions. The truth is, with enough rewards and punishments, you can force someone to memorize rote facts, but you can't ever force a child to be interested. And we all know that if a child is genuinely passionate and interested about something, they won't stop learning. You can't stop them learning. Often, it feels like the very things our kids are most interested in, like fashion or Minecraft or Barbies or Pokemon, may be in direct opposition with our idealized fantasy of what they should be interested in and learning. Math, science, history, literature, the arts. This is what drives this massive gap between parent and child and inviting ever more arguments and power struggles. Ask me how I know. Have you ever found yourself bribing your child? If you finish one more page on this worksheet, then we can go do screen time. First, let me teach you long division. And if you get this right, we'll eat ice cream. But what if I told you, you could learn anything through whatever it is your child is interested in? Magic, right? Let me show you how this works. In her amazing book, The Brave Learner, Julie Bogart calls it this. You can learn everything through anything. Take a child's area of interest and map out all the different ways that this particular area of interest could lead to just common standard subjects. Now, you can of course apply this to any other subject area, say ballet or the jungle. It doesn't matter, robots, outer space, mermaids, whatever your kid is into, you can do this with that. In my kid's case, this is Harry Potter. So we'll put Harry Potter in the middle and then we'll branch out with English, including reading and writing. We have history, math, entrepreneurship perhaps, science, cooking, art, theater, philosophy, and even event planning. Let me show you our examples of how we've tied in all of these elements into our Harry Potter curriculum. For English, obviously, we're reading Harry Potter. So my son is reading the book. He can read and he's reading to himself. And then we also have them on audiobook. So he both gets to read them, but also to listen to them and hear the proper enunciation and the proper pronunciation, a lot of the words that he may not have been reading properly. With regards to writing, um, my son has written his own little Harry Potter comic strip with alternative scenes. He's been writing uh, invitations to his Harry Potter party with a quill so that he can create his own Harry Potter paraphernalia. When we discuss the books, we discuss different moral issues that come up for the characters, the motifs, the alternative choices they might have made. We discuss references to pop culture or other influences that may have influenced J.K. Rowling in writing Harry Potter. I look for behind the scenes documentaries or interviews where we can learn more about how Harry Potter came to be. We can discuss history and the influences of historical sites and events. We can look at the design of Hogwarts for example, and see the medieval and gothic architectural influences and learn more about that. We can use blogs or draw our own versions of Hogwarts. So how does math play into Harry Potter? For example, if Professor Snape gives each student two eyeballs for their magic potion and there are 36 students in the, in the class, how many eyeballs does Professor Snape need? If Hagrid has eight bags of grass and four unicorns, how many bags of, of grass would each unicorn get? Or as my son asked me, if it takes two minutes to read each page and there are 30 pages in a chapter and there are 17 chapters in the book, how long will it take me to read the book? We also take math into the direction of entrepreneurship because that's something that really interests me and my son. So we started creating little Harry Potter figures and we opened an Etsy shop together. And we talked about how we should price our products, what we would need in order to sell them. Now, this was just a little experiment, but he gets the experience of setting up a shop from the process of validating a product asking his friends, would you like this? Would you like to buy it? How much would you pay for it? Then taking the photos of them, making his stock of products and getting the website up and running. 
We can talk about zoology and mythical creatures. We can draw them and design our own. Of course, there are endless opportunities for artistic exploration around Harry Potter. We can make our own glasses. We can create our own wands, which we did. We went out and got our supplies and watched tutorials on YouTube and made our own wands. We can do a lot of theatre, of course. We can act out scenes. We can dress up as the characters. And then for us, we're going to bring it all together with a Harry Potter birthday party. We're talking about budgeting and event planning and invitations and social etiquette and all of the things like that that go in to creating a party. We can also get the Harry Potter recipe book and make food that is themed on Harry Potter. So we'll learn cooking and measuring and budgeting and all of that stuff built in and wrapped into creating a Harry Potter birthday party. And of course, science as well. There are great curriculums and ideas online. Just go to Pinterest and you'll find a ton of different scientific experiments we can do that have Harry Potter themes. So do you see how through just one subject, we've touched on all these different skills that otherwise we would be addressing through rote memorization and one by one in a separate way. Now, that's not to say that we don't sometimes do the rote learning as well. We do. We have a math curriculum and we pretty much follow it in kind of a dry way. But as much as I can, I try to bring it in and bring it through the lens of my child's passion. Whatever your child's interested in, I know you can expand it and learn about everything through anything.